Welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. This is the second video about our new toy, a heat pump in our backyard. It's been brilliant to tell people all about the process, all about the impacts of a heat pump, including a whole load of our neighbors who have walked past in the last couple of weeks. I've spent some time trying to work out how to answer that question. What's that? And how does that work? And that's led me to thinking long and hard about how to explain heat pumps. So in this video, I'm gonna talk through some simple thermodynamics to try and explain how this guy will keep us warm. My name is Tom, and this is a little series about a low carbon lifestyle. I wonder if you've ever thought much about how a boiler works. I have a little bit but I'm an engineer who's been involved with designing and specifying heating systems. I should have thought about it. But when you turn your heating on or run the hot tap, what is actually happening? Well, simply put, we are moving energy from one place to another through a, through a process. For a boiler, we're taking energy stored in a pipe in the form of natural gas, and we're using that gas as a fuel to produce heat to put that heat or energy into another set of pipes in the form of water. We set the natural gas alight and then we run some water nearby in a heat exchanger and we lift its temperature. That's about as simplified as you can make it. And I'm sure it's a bit more complicated than that, but you get the idea. A heat pump has a very similar outcome, but a very different process. We're not burning anything. We don't have a fuel, but we're still delivering heat to water in a set of pipes. Oh, well, a heat pump moves energy or heat from one place to another. It pumps heat. If you look into the laws of thermodynamics, you'll see that the second law suggests that heat moves in one direction, simple as, from hotter to colder. But a heat pump reverses that. And in doing so, it doesn't break the laws of thermodynamics, but it moves heat from a colder to a warmer place by, in thermodynamic language, doing some work. How, what, when, and why. I'll try and talk through it in, the, in this video. So what is going on in here? I'm going to talk through this machine to try and explain. And if you're into your thermodynamics and those, those laws, or into words such as entropy, or you like a graph, you could follow along by searching on Ecosia for the heat pump cycle, or even if you're sneaky, the refrigeration cycle, because what's happening in here is really similar to what's happening in your fridge. So let's start with the fan, the bit that's fairly recognizable on a heat pump. This fan is drawing air into the heat pump, drawing it from the back and through the front. And it's pushing it over a thing called a heat exchange changer. This is basically a set of pipes that loop back on themselves to increase the surface area of that pipe. The larger the surface area, the more loops, the more heat that could be exchanged. In the case of a heat pump, this heat exchanger is called an evaporator. The air moving over the evaporator heats the fluid inside and in doing so, changes its state from a liquid to a gas. Or as its name would suggest, evaporates that liquid to a gas. So to evaporate a fluid, we need to add heat. And it's heat that later we're gonna to want to take away to put inside the house. And actually you can feel that the air, as the air leaves this fan, that leaves the heat pump at the front, it's significantly cooler than the air around you. Heat has been moved from the air to the refrigerant, to the fluid inside the process. In the case of our heat pump in our backyard, this guy, the refrigerant is called propane. We call this the working fluid because it carries the process. Propane isn't a fuel that we burn. We could do, it's flammable, but it's a liquid that the heat moves about on. Think of it as if, as if it's the water carrying a log flume or something like that. After the evaporator, we have propane that is all excited. It's drawn heat from the surrounding air. It's evaporated it to a gas and it moves on to the next stage. This part for this heat pump is hidden in the gubbins in here, and we call it a compressor. And surprisingly, as the name suggests, it's called that because it compresses the gas. In doing so, it increases the gas pressure. We're doing work to the fluid in increasing the pressure. And as stated in the laws of thermodynamics again, we're adding energy to it. So where's this extra energy coming from? Well, the compressor is powered by electricity. I don't know if you can see it up there. The electrical energy is moving from the wire to power the compressor to do work to the fluid and depositing that work as energy in the propane gas. We added heat at the evaporator as the air came through here and we add some energy by compressing the gas 
and now we have a gas with a lot of energy ready to do something. On the thermodynamic curve, we call this gas now superheated. Isn't that exciting? Superheated. Take that gas boiler, you don't get superheated. At least I don't think you do. So now we have lots of energy in a superheated vapour. And we move on to something else, to the next step, which again has a really helpful name and again is stored behind me in the gubbins in here. And this part of the process is called the condenser because here the gas condenses from a very excited gas to a less excited and cooler liquid. It's a similar process but backwards to the evaporator. But here the condenser is taking what we call the latent heat evaporation, that heat that we added in the evaporator and we added to the fluid and it's giving, it's giving that heat away into our heating system. And because we have compressed the gas, we've added energy into the system and we've multiplied that heat that we use to evaporate the gas. And this means that we can get a load of heat out of this heat pump and into our water. So the propane condensing gives off some of that heat to some water that flows in and out of the back of the heat pump. And that is the good stuff. That's the stuff that we're aiming for. The hot or warm water then runs through the pipes down there into our house and into a couple of different circuits. First of all, it runs into a coil in the hot water tank to give us hot water for our showers, our baths, our hot water taps and all that. And second, it runs into a heating circuit that runs around, that runs around to all our radiators and keeps us really nice and warm. All of that is the same as if it was powered by a boiler with a hot water tank. A cobby water is a little bit different, but it's a very similar process. But back in the heat pump, we now have this cooler, less excited propane that's given away a lot of its energy to the hot water, but it's still under a little bit of pressure. So we run this over an expansion valve or through an expansion valve. You might call this a throttle. An expansion valve is basically the opposite of a compressor. Running it through the expansion valve, we are now left with a, a low pressure and low temperature liquid. And that liquid is ready to run back around again to the evaporator and the big fan to take some more heat out of the air. And that is the heat pump process. And that is how a heat pump works. The fluid, propane, keeps running around the system and delivers heat where we need it to, continuously. It doesn't get taken out, it doesn't get burnt. All this happens without burning anything, at least burning anything locally. We might burn something a few miles away in a power station, but we're doing all that without burning and we're making heat so that we are comfortable inside. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Well, hopefully it's pretty warm. <laughs> Depending on the refrigerant and the pressure that it's left at as it comes out of the expansion valve, a heat pump can take heat out of the air down to very, very low temperatures. So temperatures including whatever temperature it can still evaporate that gas at. And for propane at normal atmospheric pressure, the boiling point is minus 40. So I think technically, we could get a heat pump to work down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. And that's if the fan and the other electrical systems didn't freeze up. I think our heat pump is rated to work down to minus 20. But even County Durham, I don't think we would expect temperatures much below minus five. So the efficiency of the unit goes down a little bit, but it still keeps you warm. It still does what it's meant to do. At the start of the video, I mentioned the, I mentioned the phrase refrigeration. And that's because a fridge works in a really similar process. We could say the gubbins at the back of the fridge is a heat pump. It just takes some heat from inside the fridge, from the air inside the fridge and pushes it into some other warmer air rather than the water that our heat pump will push it into. And similarly, if you've ever been somewhere with air conditioning or comfort cooling, those units use a similar process too, taking heat from one place via a refrigerant and dumping it elsewhere. So next time a neighbor walks past and says, what's that and how does it work? I might chat on for probably 10 minutes. I could even send them a link to this video or maybe I'll just say, it's a bit like a fridge. So what do you reckon? Does that explain what's going on in a heat pump? What else might you need to know? Please do ask away any questions that you have in the comment section below. Heat pumps are surprisingly common and have been used all around us for a long, long time. They're a nifty bit of thermodynamic technology that gives us heat with, that, with a much lower impact on the environment than a gas boiler. In the next video, 
I'm going to try and look at some of the data about exactly how much lower the impact could be. Thank you so much for watching. Let's keep fossil fuels where they belong, in the ground or in a museum.